Hey, it's Mike here, and today Adele's cert food diet that allegedly allowed her to lose 100 pounds. What is it? Is it healthy? What is a cert anyway? And does it actually activate your skinny gene as the founders claim? The diet's founders also claim that you will lose seven pounds in seven days. So I went down the rabbit hole and actually discovered some very interesting longevity research, which may or may not be way beyond the capabilities of the diet. And I wanna say, well, there are some aspects of this diet that I legitimately appreciate. There are also some considerable red flags. Anyway, just lay back in your cert -a bed so that you can be cert food certified with a high degree of certainty so that you can then assert yourself. I'm sorry, that amount of punning is actually giving you permission to stop watching my video, but don't leave, let's learn together, let's go. First off, Adele's 100 pound weight loss was pretty shocking because she was off the map for a little bit and then all of a sudden on her birthday, she posts this picture and bam, it was not the Adele that people were used to seeing. And now I wanna say that this video is not meant to be a discussion around her body or ideal weights in general. We're really just trying to investigate if this is a healthy diet because celebrities drive behavior. So we're gonna have a ton of people scrambling to adopt this diet. And we have to ask the question, will those people be better off? Will they be healthier psychologically and physically by trying this diet? And a ton of people are definitely trying this diet and a ton are interested to gauge that interest. You can see this girl who tried Adele's cert food diet, you know, 750,000 views. You get the point. As for the diet itself, it was founded a few years back by two guys with nutritional medicine degrees. They're Aiden Goggins and Glenn Matten. Seen here looking like a couple of bros drinking IPAs, but wait, those are green juices, my bad. And in terms of the diet, we have to answer the most basic question here, which has a bit of a complicated answer, and that is, what is a CERT? Well, CERT stands for sirtuins, which are a group of proteins. There's seven of them, and the one of concern is sirtuin-1, which helps regulate metabolism, and it is encoded by a gene called CERT-1, which they refer to as the skinny gene. Good marketing, and I have to give it to them. Yes, it is related to lipid metabolism, but the question is, does raising CERT-1 actually decrease fat, or is it just a result of being skinnier? For example, from this study that looked at obese, normal weight, and anorexic people, the obese people did have the lowest CERT-1 protein level, normal weight people had less, and then anorexic people won. It's a fine call, the skinny gene, but there's clearly a lot more going on than just raise your CERT-1, lower your body fat. There's so much more going on with CERT-1 in general too, and it's actually quite interesting. It is involved in a number of important health functions, including those that could affect longevity. They've been described as the guardians of the genome, and they help keep you young, and they tend to decline with age, unfortunately. So as you can see, there is just a lot going on with CERT-1, but there's definitely not a lot going on in terms of actual evidence that their diet has any effect on CERT-1 at all. And we're gonna go deeper into the research in a digestible way in various areas but the idea behind the diet here is simply eat foods that increase sirtuin activity, hence cert foods. I probably should have said that way earlier, but their site actually links to sirtuin activators in the form of a Wikipedia page, which emphasizes that these guys are real scientists. And on that page, it mentions resveratrol. You're probably familiar with it being named as a compound in red wine. And that is a centerpiece of their cert food diet, clearly. Another interesting point worth mentioning on that Wikipedia page about sirtuin activators is the name David Sinclair. He's a PhD researcher from Harvard, and his research is pretty interesting. Sometimes he makes some pretty bold claims and he's a bit of a business guy, but another point about CERT-1 and longevity that is just worth putting in here. And we fed resveratrol to the yeast cells and they lived longer, about 30% longer. We fed resveratrol to worms and flies. We fed it to mice and the mice were healthier. They were, in fact, seemingly immune to the effects of obesity and later molecules that were even more potent, powerful than resveratrol, more drug-like molecules were able to extend the lifespan of those mice and keep them healthier and younger for longer. As you can probably guess, I'm not a huge fan of animal experimentation, but these are interesting points. I don't know if these will apply to humans, for example, as this Harvard page, why not keep with Harvard, mentions that a lot of times my studies do not transfer over to humans. 
In fact, their gene expression for the same genes can be entirely different. So who knows whether this will amount to anything or not. But part of the reason I got this video out kind of late is because I went down a massive rabbit hole of David Sinclair's research and claims on longevity and his three pathways of aging. If you wanna see a video on that, let me know down below. If you're looking at lab mice, we're talking about mice here, not humans. If you give them resveratrol, their CERT1 level will increase. However, this does not appear to have been demonstrated in humans and especially not for the amount of resveratrol that you're gonna be eating from the foods in this diet. And we're gonna investigate the numbers on that in a bit, but in terms of the dietary recommendations, they're just saying eat foods that are higher in resveratrol among other things. And so that lands on red wine and chocolate. So a diet of red wine and chocolate will lead you to a nice skinny immortality. Now here's where things kind of start to irk me and that is the weight loss marketing, especially with the explosion caused by Adele and looking to their book. Yes, they have a whole book on this. Their claim is that not only is it used by Adele, but that it will help you lose seven pounds in seven days while experiencing lasting energy and eating all the foods you love. I love lard, what about lard? Go for it. If you love it, you can eat it. Too good to be true, let's do some math. Well, it turns out that if we're talking about seven pounds of fat, which any given dieter is probably assuming from that claim, it's basically, biochemically impossible without exercise or liposuction. <laughs> Most people, especially who the diet is being marketed to, are probably gonna burn about 2,000 calories a day, but a pound of fat contains 3,500 calories. So the math doesn't add up, but they do say that this seven pounds and seven days weight loss has been clinically shown, and they did in fact do a pilot study. However, the science was, let's just say, not good. It was not published, had no control group. It didn't have very many participants and was in a high-end spa with a gym, so there's probably an exercise aspect. And finally, it was only over a week. And why is that important? And this brings me to the diet itself, that over the first three days of that week, you're supposed to just eat 1,000 calories a day. Starvation. And then for four days, you can bump it up to 1,500 calories. So we're talking about 1,300 calories a day on average for that week. And so an average of a 700 calorie deficit per day for that first week. So seven days of that, less than 5,000 calories of calorie deficit, which totals about one and a half pound of total fat loss likely. <laughs> But what is really important here is that they're taking a bunch of people who are gonna be going into starvation mode, which could very easily be triggering some binge starve cycles, especially the market that they are advertising to. I mean, think about it, those first three days, you're eating like less than half of what the average person eats, starving day after day, hour after hour, and then you get to ramp it up a little bit for four more days. But then on that eighth day, you can eat as many calories as you want. I'm sorry, binge eating disorder recipe right there. To top it off, one of the recent creators said, that pizza and champagne are on the menu. So let's just say parts of this diet are certifiably insane. And just as a point of contrast, looking to the Broad study out of New Zealand, which used a whole food vegan diet with no calorie restriction. These people were able to eat as much as they want and they had no added exercise. And according to the researchers, it was the largest weight loss at six and 12 months of any program that they had seen. That's the contrast point. Anyway, what foods are they actually recommending for people to eat on the cert food diet? And this is where I do approve, and that is because they are all plant-based. But there appears to be no don't eat this list. It is not a vegetarian or vegan diet by any means. In fact, looking to the recipes on their webpage, any of the full meal recipes, you know, they're centered around things like chicken and shrimp, which are high in cholesterol and saturated fat. So yeah, meat and dairy are still on the menu among a bunch of other things. So this appears to essentially be the diet that has been recommended to the standard American population for decades. And we haven't seen much improvements there. And in terms of meat, yeah, a meat company ensured people that yes, the book goes on to suggest that poultry can be eaten freely in addition to red meat three times a week. Kind of sounds like a description of the Western diet. However, and this is a big however, Adele herself appears to have been vegetarian since around 2012. From Plant-Based News, quote, according to multiple reports sometime around 2011 and 2012, she stopped eating meat, telling BBC Radio, double quote, whenever I'm about to eat meat, I always see my little dog's eyes. Hello. In addition, the diet appears to be punctuated by a ton of caffeinated green juices, which could add up in price because there's a lot of them there. I'm not against low sugary green juices. I think they're healthy, but this, this could probably add up a little bit. So the diuretic effect of that caffeine plus the pretty notable calorie restriction could be responsible for people losing some, some good water weight there and maybe that one pound of fat. 
who knows? But as for Adele, her exact cert food inspired diet appears to be a bit of a black box. Obviously there was not meat, but if I were to quantify it, it would probably be a meatless Mediterranean diet with added juicing. And that's a good step away from a standard American diet or standard UK diet. But what is probably the most important here, which is not mentioned enough in this conversation, is that Adele also happened to be adopting a new, pretty intense workout regime. Now we're talking about weightlifting and Pilates, among other things. And let's just say, if you have a trainer who is referred to as the Brazilian body wizard at your disposal, you're probably gonna see some abnormal results. All right, now let's have a little bit of fun, do some calculations and see if the foods they're recommending could realistically raise cert one or not. This is where red wine definitely fails because not only does it contain alcohol, which is a class 1A carcinogen, but the actual resveratrol amounts are, you know, a little underwhelming. Back to that Harvard scientist, David Sinclair. He takes 1000 milligrams or one gram of resveratrol a day and other studies, you know, might not even see a result until they get up around 2.5. That's the case with this IGF-1 study, which yeah, it's awesome. It lowered IGF-1 in that amount by a little bit. But when looking at the global average resveratrol amount for red wine, we're talking at about 4.5 milligrams per liter, which is seven glasses of wine. So to get the 1000 milligrams that Sinclair is taking per day, you would have to drink 1,555 glasses of red wine. Japanese not weed can have like 50 to 180 times the resveratrol content of red wine, but people are not throwing that back in any reasonable amount. And let's just say the other foods in the cert food diet are lower in resveratrol than these, so. It's not looking great. Couple that with how resveratrol is broken down pretty rapidly in the human body. This next study makes some sense. And that study looked at older populations, how much resveratrol intake they had and various disease outcomes. And the results, I'm sorry to break it to you, but resveratrol intake had no association with inflammation, heart disease, cancer, or mortality that essentially, unfortunately debunks the entire diet, at least the cert aspect. So in conclusion, while it has some interesting scientific theory behind it, and I'm really happy that it encourages people to focus on plants at the very least, it appears that for many people, this might just be another yo-yo calorie restriction diet situation that will probably lead them to rebound and gain the weight back. From a more critical angle, it could simply encourage people to drink more wine eat more foods like chocolate and still eat all the pizza and meat, feel way better about it, probably turn into a little bit more of an alcoholic and have worse health outcomes. Also on a more harsh end, it is more or less taking that interesting scientific theory and pseudo-scientifically applying it to these foods. That's because there's no evidence that these foods increase cert one in the human body. And I would be happy to be proven wrong on that. So if these guys can somehow get some independent trial done where it does show that people going on the cert food diet raise their cert one levels, cool but I don't think that's gonna happen. But in terms of Adele, it probably did encourage her to eat a more whole food plant-based diet. So if you need some complex scientific situation around your diet, then yeah, maybe this will help a little bit, but to compare it to a whole food vegan diet, which has been clinically shown to reverse heart disease and diabetes, it'll be very compelling in the area of weight loss. Also, not harming animals and also being great for the environment, all those things come together and make it a pretty good diet. All right, let me know down below what you think about the cert food diet. Also, let me know if you want me to do a video on those three pathways of aging, perhaps how they relate to diet because there's some interesting stuff there and I just did a bunch of extra research, so why not? All right, feel free to like the video, subscribe, share all those good things and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.